Hey there, friends and followers. This week's informative video is none other than the market report for the month of November. Let's take a few minutes together and go over some of the area's marketplace statistics as well as some news and info in the world of real estate as well. Stay tuned. Ah, so yes, as always, welcome back. So as we wind down into the heart of the holidays and the new year, the month of November gave some wins to motivated consumers who have grown weary and tired of escalating rent prices over this last year. Some determined buyers were able to obtain home ownership before current mortgage rates took their proposed jump, but we did find inventory in November once again an issue. Because of the lack of homes available for purchase, the price of homes continued in an upward trend. It had been hoped that with new construction that would ease some of the inventory issue, but still with supply chain disruptions and continued labor shortages, that hasn't exactly been the case. Now, whereas constant up and down flow is to be expected in the market, this month's dip was not welcomed by those out currently in the trenches looking to secure their new single family residents. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the numbers. Looking at single family residential home sales here in the Ocala Marion County area, starting up first with closed sales. Closed sales we did see down in the month of November coming at 668 closed units versus that of October 733. This still being a 20% increase over that of which we saw in uh, November of 2020 coming in at 556 homes closed. Sales volume we did see down slightly, $203 million for the overall area versus that of October's $210 million. Average sale price we did see uh, take a hike up coming back in at $305,000 average sale price versus 287 in October. Median time to contract we did see increase by a day, 12 days from getting the home on the market to it eventually going under contract versus October's 11 days. Average list price received we did see at a steady 100% in the transition from October to November. Jumping on over to the inventory side of things, uh, pending home sales, we did see down slightly 589 pending units versus October 724. New listings, we also saw down 608 new homes for sale versus October 724. Active inventory as a whole, also down 871 homes actively for sale versus 900 in October. This, of course, being a 30% decrease of that of November 2020, which uh, we had about uh, 1,250 homes on the market at that time. Now, also that uh, month supply of inventory number, the 5.5 being the balance benchmark favoring neither buyer or selling side in the marketplace, we did see take a hit as well. 1.3 months supply of inventory versus October's 1.4. So all in all, some up and down flow is to be expected in the marketplace. However, this month's dip was not welcomed by those individuals currently out in the marketplace looking to secure their new home. Let's take a look at some other news brought to you, of course, by the folks over at FloridaRealtors.org. Up first, home insurance and more specifically replacement costs, which covers the rebuild of a destroyed home, is now more expensive for the same reason as new homes are higher supply costs. The COVID-19 pandemic reached into a number of industries, including home construction, which we already knew faced a shortage of supplies and labor. At the same time, demand for new construction and home remodeling is now found to be on the rise. The Insurance Information Institute found that premiums spiked an average of 20 to 30 percent during the last year in California, Florida, and Louisiana specifically, while the current inflation rate sits only at about 6 percent. Many say the increased costs are transitory, but the pandemic continues to play a hand with each new strain that emerges. With more catastrophic events across the United States this year, including weather-related disasters with losses that have exceeded $1 billion in Florida alone, only three of 52 local insurance have seen a profit this year. Homeowners insurance premiums are likely to rise even if policyholders maintain the coverage levels, but it's suggested that homeowners reevaluate the cost of rebuilding any home or structure to ensure that they have appropriate coverage levels. Next up, after meeting earlier in the month, the Fed now plans to stop bond purchases twice as fast as planned and possibly put the program on halt altogether in the month of March. Now, by shrinking the monthly bond purchases at twice the pace it previously announced, the Fed's new forecast says it will raise interest rates three times in this next year as opposed to one rate hike as projected earlier in the month of September. The Fed's key rate, which is now sitting close to zero, influences many consumer and business loans, which those rates would likely also rise. It's been said that with inflation pressures rising, the Fed needed to begin tightening credit for consumers and businesses faster than originally projected. Certainly an art of walking a thin line as by raising borrower costs too quickly, there is a risk of stifling consumer and business spending that in turn could possibly weaken the economy and potentially raise unemployment. 
However, on the other hand, if the Fed waits too long to raise rates, inflation could likely surge out of control. Apartment rent and cost of home ownership is said to make up about one third of the consumer price index and has been rising at 5% annual pace the past few months per calculations by economists. With everything in lieu of, restaurant prices have also jumped over 5% in November in contrast to a year ago with the result of higher wage costs. Such increases will likely keep inflation well above the Fed's 2% annual target next year. And lastly, one out of every five home buyers in the marketplace are single women, which is twice the percentage of single men. According to the National Association of Realtors, when it comes to home buyers, the percentage of single women is second only to married couples. Currently, single women make up about 19% of the home buying market, while less than half that percentage are single men, sitting at around 9%, and married couples making up the majority of the marketplace at around 60%. Now, when looking at NAR's profile of home buyers and sellers, single women buyers are more likely to purchase a home if they have a child under the age of 18, and they're more likely to purchase a multi-generational home to accommodate adult siblings, adult children, and grandparents. Well, there you have it. That has been the market report for the month of November. As always, if you have any questions or would like any further input on any of this information covered, drop a comment below, send me off a message. I'd love to be uh, whatever resource I can to you folks out there. Uh, slide on over to the page and smash the like and subscribe button to stay up to date when great information like this is released about the Ocala-Marion County area. As always, thanks for tuning in, checking out the videos. We'll catch you guys on the next.